before I get into my mobility work and, and the everyday habits that I am always into, I want to go over a little bit of an anatomy lesson. As many of you know, we here at 3D Muscle Journey, we don't just tell folks to do things because we're the pros and you're not, um, and we have the education and you don't, but we like to tell folks why we do the things that we do. And so that um, you know, helps you guys be more informed and make better decisions. So I'm going to show you a little bit anatomically why uh, I do the things that I do and hopefully that will help you decide if, if these you know, tips that I'm going to give you, these strategies, are right for you. So I'm referring to my little anatomy chart. The one I'm going to really focus on is this chart right here. This is the internal cavity of the um, abdominal area. So imagine we, we, we cut open the abdominal wall and we peel all the guts out. This is what we see. Now, um, probably the most important muscle in the quote unquote core is this muscle right here. To say that the abdominals are the core that's kind of like saying the orange peel is the core of the e, of the orange, or the apple peel is the core of the apple. When you're referring to your core, these muscles here are your core, the muscles you don't even see, the muscles that run right along the spine and actually support the spine. So the main muscle I'm going to refer to is this muscle, the psoas muscle. And you can see this is a big, thick, band of muscle and it runs on either sides of the spine. So that muscle right there is the one that's predominantly responsible for supporting the the spine, the vertebrae, along with all the other muscles of course that you know surround the abdomen, but these ones here are, are very important. Now one thing to understand is the importance, or I guess I should say the relation of the hip flexor to the spine. A lot of people don't realize this, but those hip flexors that you see up by the hip bones, um, they actually run right underneath this band of connective tissue and then connect right here to the anterior portions of the vertebrae. It might be kind of hard to see. Hopefully my camera can kind of clear that up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So you can see as we follow that band, it attaches down here in the femur, up underneath that little bit of connective tissue, and then actually runs right up and attaches to these front portions of the vertebrae. So when those muscles are tight, they actually pull the vertebrae forward. And so what happens is that when those muscles are tight and pulling the vertebrae forward, the erector muscles and the lats in the low back have no choice but to pull back. That's the way the entire body works. There are opposing muscle groups. One shortens and pulls the anatomy toward that muscle. The other one lengthens. The core is no different. It's just a matter of a lot of the muscles that you don't see are the ones that are responsible for that. So this muscle here and these down here are the muscles that I focus on a lot in my mobility work and my um, basically my everyday habits. So that's the musculature. Those are the muscles I'm going to focus on. Let's talk about the bony anatomy now and the natural curve of the bony anatomy and specifically the lumbar spine. As I mentioned in my previous video, this scoliosis that I've got, basically it's cosmetic, it's ugly, but it's not going to hurt me. It's not an issue. I can't do anything about it anyway. Now my spondylolisthesis that you see here, that's an issue. That's what I got to focus on. So again, the lumbar spine. That's the area that I'm going to focus on, and specifically maintaining this lumbar lordosis that I pointed out here, this natural curve um, that all of our spines have to a certain degree. Now, we never want to round the back, especially with me, because that pinches the anterior portions of those vertebrae together, ultimately pushes on those discs, causing the disc to spew out forth 
um, or you know herniate forward, which bad thing, especially for me when this last disc is really not there. I mean, there's not much disc space as you can see here. Good disc spaces between the vertebrae above, but you look at this part right here between L5 and S1, not much space there. So rounding very bad. I need to maintain lower doses at all times, whether I'm picking up a tennis shoe or 400 pounds. So now the spondylolisthesis. L5 is moved forward on S1 as you can see here. Remember those hip flexors and that psoas plexus, they attach to the front of these vertebrae. So when they're tight, if any of those muscles are tight, they're going to pull forward on the fifth vertebrae, causing more instability uh, and more pain. So that's my focus, along with not rounding to pinch those vertebrae together in the front and not over arch so that I'm pushing the intervertebral foramen together, pinching that nerve root that comes out right there. So that's my anatomy lesson to you and kind of why I'm going to do the things that I do. In the next two videos, I'm going to go over all of my mobility work, my movements that I do, my pre-workout rituals. And I'm going to kick that off with a video basically talking on my focus on posture um, and my primary move, my primary mobility move that I always do all the time in the weight room and not that allow me to do things like this.